Something that I've discovered in my 20 plus years of paper crafting is that I absolutely love to add soft textures like stitching and sewing, knitting, crochet to my paper craft projects. And there was a video on YouTube recently that I saw from Charlene Studio 21. I'll make sure that's linked down below. She has completely inspired me to create these beautiful background papers. Now these can be dividers in a journal, they can be backgrounds on a card, whatever you want to use them for but the method is so simple I have adapted it a little bit because I've just found a slightly easier way of doing part of it but hopefully you'll learn something from this and generate beautiful texture and dimension on your paper craft projects using your either sewing machine or you can do this with hand stitching if you prefer although obviously it will take a little bit longer now I'm going to show you some examples in a second of beautiful projects that I have created using this method Method. Now I'm going to call it the paper stitching method, I believe Charlene's studio, Charlene called it the paper netting method but that was her own name for it. Um, there's probably lots of different interpretations of this across YouTube and across the internet but this is for me the simplest way to do this with a very very basic sewing machine that I already have at home. So this is where each of the paper stitched elements starts up. It's simply a piece of pattern paper. It may be something like this, which is a book page, a piece of music paper, and we've got stitching into it. Now, the stitches I'll explain to you in a moment. I'm actually going to take a new piece of paper and I'm going to stitch this with you on my machine to show you the settings I use, um, any other tips and tricks there, and then we're going to create the netting as such uh, using these pieces and then as I say again we'll have a quick look at those projects that I've completed with them to give you inspiration for what you would use your sheets for. Now as you can see there's different types of paper here, different types of thickness and weights. Definitely the thicker and heavier weight your paper is, so this one for example is around about 200 GSM um, and they do get lighter. The book page as you can imagine ex is extremely thin. Now two things to consider. Firstly, if your paper is too thin, too lightweight, the stitching will simply break the paper as you go through it. So you want to have some sort of weight to that paper already. So tissue paper is going to be a no-no unless you're using a really, really fine needle and a really, really long stitch. But if you're going to do that, you're not really easily going to get the effect that we want afterwards. Now, if you're using a heavier weight paper, you're also going to have trouble with tearing and breaking apart the paper fibres later to cut out the elements that you want to do. So bear this in mind. So I'm saying around about a 190 GSM and I will put that up on the screen in pounds for those of you who are not in the UK. So around about 190 GSM paper is kind of what I found ideal weight. So I'm going to get my sewing machine out. I'm going to create this kind of mesh squared pattern into this one. Um, I believe this one is from 49 and Market. Uh, it's an old pattern paper. I'm not even sure it's available now, but it's absolutely beautiful. I've been saving it for something uh, like this, something that's just perfect for it. And I think today is its day. So this is my sewing machine. Now a little secret, I did go to film this video a couple of days ago and my usual machine, uh, it gave up. It retired on me very suddenly and very dramatically. There's no going back. So I've actually found this one as a cheap alternative. It's second hand. It cost me a fraction of the price it was worth. I was really pleased with the purchase and it does everything I need it to do. So I've got some zigzag stitches here and I've got some straight stitches and I will use both within this technique. So I keep my tension the same as if I was stitching fabric. I do replace my needle though. My needle, I make sure there's a really fine needle in there. Um, and I only save this for paper. When it comes to me stitching fabric, I will take the needle out and I'll replace it with a different one. This is because the paper is going to blunt your needle and it's absolutely no good for going into fabric then. Um, I've, as you can see, I've got on here at the moment a straight stitch, but you do want to keep the uh, stitch, the spaces between stitches, a, a bit of a distance there because otherwise if you're stitching too close together, you're just going to be tearing holes into your paper so close that everything's going to rip apart. My favourite stitch though is a zigzag stitch. I am using an ordinary thread in here, cotton thread, in both the bobbin and the spool at the top as well. I don't worry with reversing my stitch either to secure anything. I quite like the look 
of the loose ends I trim them sort of with about five to ten mil on each end and I just think it makes it look really nice and textured when it's finished so this is an example of a zigzag stitch so you can see I keep my zigzags quite small not too wide but reasonably close together and this here is an example of a straight stitch um, but the straight stitch is again it's quite a long stitch so just to make sure that I'm not punching holes into my paper too close together the same with these circles I've also gone with a straight stitch here with the circles I did go around each circle roughly um, because they're quite difficult to do but I went over twice to kind of just stabilize the shape there now in this one I'm just going to do some straight stitching just a grid in the same way as I have in the background here or on this book page just here I'm going to be doing this with probably with the straight stitch because it's much quicker the, the zigzag stitch does take a little bit longer and if you want to do a shape like a heart or a circle I definitely suggest use a pencil and draw it on your paper first so as if I'm working with fabric I'm just going to place the foot down place my needle down as well into the paper and then I'm just going to go along like I say I'm going to go with a straight stitch here and I've kept the width between each stitch quite a distance for this one I've chosen not to do the full page I've just done a section that's a grid um, and then I'm just going to pop out some squares from here so here I'm just cutting off these excess threads like I say leaving around about five mil or so very roughly um, on the end of each one and some of them may come undone a little bit so it's a good idea maybe not to remove um, some of the paper near the end of the threads unless you've secured those by kind of back stitching now talking about doing this without a machine if you don't have one at home but you love the look you could go in with hand stitching um, embroidery with like embroidery threads for example this is going to be quite time consuming it is absolutely possible but uh, just bear in mind you need to enjoy the process of actually doing the stitching because it's going to take you a while now I've gone around the front and I have taken off all the excess stitches but don't forget the back as well because you're going to have all these stitches on the reverse as well that you're going to need to trim so now to start making this net or mesh type pattern here we're going to be popping out some of the areas inside the stitching let's start with the book page first of all so this is a very thin paper should be fairly easy to break apart now what you may find is that you need to get started so let's just go straight in to the center here you may need to get started with something like a pokey tool um, maybe a craft knife or a pair of scissors but once you get started you should be able to gently peel away your paper leaving the stitching intact now what I found was that sometimes this was a little difficult particularly if it's a thicker paper so I was playing around with techniques and I found that actually adding a little bit of water to your paper fibers massively helps so I'm going to spritz some water just on here now you can of course spray your entire paper if you're happy that it will dry okay I've obviously got some a little bit of paint on there previously and I'm just going to run the water along with the paintbrush where I want to tear it okay let's do a couple of squares here for now and I try not to do any areas too close to each other because they are just going to end up leaving you with this random thread in the middle and then you can really easily just tear away along the stitching there it comes away so much easier you haven't got the risk of actually disrupting the stitching too much that is just so much easier and you can also break into your paper much easier get started if it's wet too so this is a step that in Charlene's studio video she didn't do she was tearing it and that did work really well but um, I just found by wetting the paper you've definitely got much more control I think as well because where you're tearing you're really just pulling it apart very gently and you're giving yourself these kind of these spaces in between that can act as windows they could be shaker windows because don't forget your paper will dry and then you're just left with your stitching around the space that you've made 
Now in some areas you'll be able to actually have no paper at all on the stitching. So for example these two squares here, I've just got the line of stitching between. But the more you do that, the weaker your paper is going to get. Now this one has a fully dried and as you can see I've just taken some random squares out. I haven't done any inking or anything on this yet but this would be a really lovely divider for a junk journal, a mixed media, art journal, something like that. So I'm now going to move on to different shapes. Squares are quite easy. Uh, I've got this one here with the heart inside. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to fill with water the space that I want to remove. And that's going to be the heart first. And then I'm going to do some of the mesh around as well. So this one's going to be quite uh, labor intensive, quite time consuming, but hopefully the finished result will be beautiful. And this would be ideal in a scrapbook page or album because you could have a photo or a, a journaling piece or your title coming out from the heart in the centre. So again, just brushing some water around the area that I'm going to tear, giving that just a few moments to soak in. And you can, of course, do both sides as well, so particularly if it's a thicker paper. This will just help to uh, really soften those fibres a little bit quicker. An easy way to get started with peeling away your shape is to take something like a pokey tool and just run it along the stitching there um, over, the, over the holes where the stitching is, where you want to tear away from and you should then be able to just lift that area up before you start peeling. So there's my heart that all came out in one piece. I've got the stitched edge as well. It just looks so fun, so beautiful. I'm also going to remove just a few of the squares from around here too. This one I'm just going to pop onto black for you can so you can see where I've popped that out. It kind of looks like patchwork. It looks really, really beautiful. So um, I'm now going to move on to the circles as well. Now this one I'm going to just take sections out, not a full circle I don't think in any place. I'll see how it goes but I'm thinking more taking the centres of the circles out, leaving the adjoining pieces. Uh, like I say we'll just see how it works out. I'll start taking one or two out and just see what it looks like. Lastly on this one I've uh, kept the outside border and I've taken all of the pieces out from the centre. There's a few little paper fibres in the stitching but I don't mind that. I'm going for a distressed look anyway. Okay, now to see how these end up being created into projects. So these are such fun and textured backgrounds. I've made two cards, I've added two sheets to journal pages in my art journal. Um, as you can see here, just that simple textured background, it feels beautiful. It feels so dimensional and so different. It's very tactile. It's the sort of card that people are going to be stroking and not wanting to throw away because it actually feels handmade, which is a good thing. And all I've done is place that over a contrasting piece of cardstock, a card base, raise it up with foam pads, a quick sentiment, and that's that done. The same with the thanks as well. Uh, I've just popped that onto a nice contrasting backdrop. So that's the bright white there with a the black sentiment. And the journal page, um, I love this. It's almost as if the butterfly is in a cage there. I've positioned the letters so they sit within the grid. Uh, that's almost like uh, an additional kind of page. I can put a lot more on this page, which I will do at another time. I'll probably put some journaling, some notes there, maybe photos, whatever it may be. And on this page, I've used it as a divider. So uh, rather than a solid page, I've got a pocket here which coordinates with this page. And I've just added that book page. A little bit of brown ink around the edge, which kind of tied it into the craft a bit more. There's so much you can do with this particular technique. I absolutely love it. I'm so pleased I tried that out. Thank you again to Charlene's Studio 21 
for um, suggesting the technique, for reminding me of this sort of technique. Um, again, you'll find a link to her channel down below. Please go and give her some love as well. If you enjoyed this technique and you love mixed media, art journaling, things like that, please do make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you do love those things, I think you'll also really like this video just here. Thanks for staying tuned, everybody. Take care and I'll see you again very soon.